There is a whole host of measures that game developers put in place to try and hinder the progress of players who decide to play their games illegally. Many developers simply put blocks in place, stopping people from playing their games. However, other developers go a step further and try and make their players' lives a living hell. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and yes, today we're talking about pirated video games. Many game developers will go out of their way to implement changes to their games in the event that they suspect that players are using a pirated version of their game. This might range from being pitted against unkillable enemies to hamper your progress, or just a big label calling you out for doing so. In order to shame the player for effectively stealing their game and playing an illegitimate copy instead. But Spyro the Dragon had arguably one of the most interesting and troll-worthy anti-piracy measures I've ever seen in a video game, and that is what we're going to be talking about today. The PlayStation 1 had a growing community of people who would use ROM hacks and mods in games which effectively opened a backdoor into copying games and having them available for download online. This was a real growing problem, therefore they decided to start implementing mod chip detection in their games to try and curb this behaviour. By doing this they could not only punish the players for doing it, but also try to curb the activity to try and stop this behaviour going forward, as if they did nothing about it and people over time realised that it was easy to get your hands on a pirated version of a brandly new released game, it would be more and more popular, meaning that these companies would not get as many sales because everyone would be downloading their games online, which is certainly not what they want to happen. So when we come to the game Spyro Year of the Dragon at the time, this was one of the most hotly anticipated titles on the console, and was a system seller, meaning that people were very excited for it. But with any popular game, you're always going to get a group of people who will try and manage to get their hands on it illegally, seeing if they can download a pirated copy of the game for free and playing it on their consoles without paying a penny. The genius thing about all of this is that the discs for the PlayStation 1 were purposefully made with ridges in the design and are not perfectly flat like most CD-ROMs, meaning that discs for legitimate copies of the game would be very distinguishable from that of a pirated copy which has likely just been burnt onto a regular CD-ROM. The smart way they worked around this issue was that the game was set up with a mod chip detection. Due to the design of the legitimate discs, the game should fail in obtaining the region data on the disc, which was fully intended. However, if someone was to burn a pirated copy of the game onto a regular CD and put it in their PlayStation 1, the console would try and pick up the region data from that disc, and because it doesn't have the imperfections like a legitimate copy does, the console will be able to collect the region data. And what this means by extension, is that this system has just found an illegitimate copy of this game, and the console knows full well that you're playing a pirated version of Spyro. Circumventing the design of the CDs to try and catch players was a stroke of pure brilliance, and at the time was a great way to identify those legitimate and illegitimate copies of very popular titles. And of course, Spyro had a few tricks up its sleeve and a few things in place to try and make the lives of the pirated players a living hell. Pretty much all games will eventually get cracked for pirates use, especially if it's a popular game. However, you can hold the pirates at bay by making them believe they've cracked your game, but in fact fell right into your trap. That's one way of staying one step ahead. This was certainly an issue for Insomniac Games, who with the release of the previous Spyro title, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, despite having really really good copyright protection on place, got cracked by hackers in less than a week, which means that a brand new game released was simply available for download online within the week, and well that's not good for your bottom line. They had enough and decided to take this to a whole new level. We decided that something more had to be done to try and reduce piracy. The effort was largely successful. Though a cracked version of Year of the Dragon has become available, it took over two months for the working patch to appear. After numerous false starts on the part of the pirates, the patch for the European version took another month on top of that. The release of patches that didn't work caused a great deal of confusion among casual pirates and plenty of wasted time and discs among the commercial ones. 
So, how this normally worked is that a hacker would get their hands on a newly released title. They would work on it, crack the game, and release it online for everybody to download for free. And then they would move on. However, this is what Insomniac Games were counting on, was that the hackers wouldn't test the game properly after cracking it. And well, that's where they were able to rub their hands together and have a little bit of fun with the pirates who illegally downloaded their new game. The importance of this is that the anti-piracy measures they put in place for the game didn't start immediately, and if you were to get your hands on a copy of this and put it into your console, it would start up normally, and you could play the first few levels as intended. All to lull you into a false sense of security. After playing the game for the first few levels, you'd come across one of your faithful companions, a fairy named Zoe who simply said the following very strange message, which certainly doesn't appear in a legitimate copy of the game. I'm sorry Spyro, but you seem to be playing a hacked version of this game. This may be an illegal copy. Since this copy has been modified, you may experience problems that would not occur on a legal copy. Oh ho ho ho, you just got busted. However, the game still works fine, even though you've seen this very ominous message which clearly lets you know that the console knows you're playing a cracked version of the game, you decide to carry on playing because the game still works. I mean, why, why will you stop? Well, that's what Insomniac Games were counting on, and it's from this point onwards where their lives would start getting turned upside down. If the pirating player decided to carry on playing the game from this point onwards, they would soon start experiencing some problems with their game, as the game would start to get slow, laggy, and effectively start to break at the seams. At first, the changes are quite small, from various gems disappearing, collectible eggs not counting towards your total goal, and random crashes that would occur throughout play. Something which I assume if you'd never played the game before, would not be things that would instantly flag that there was something wrong with the game. Zoe warned you guys, but you guys ignored her fairy ass. Shame on you. As players progressed through the game, these problems would get worse and worse, and they would be hindered by even more issues, such as being randomly put back to earlier parts of the game, the game randomly crashing and having to get restarts, and effectively eggs disappearing from your counter, meaning that you'd have to go back and recollect collectibles you've already had. All of these things in place were intended to try and frustrate the player as much as possible, and eventually get them to simply quit. And as you can probably imagine, most people probably did this. They would get frustrated and angry that the game was broken, and blame it on the crackers, and then they would leave their pirated version of this game. However, what if you had balls of steel? What if you persisted through all of these problems and actually tried to finish the game? Was it possible? We wanted to make the job of cracking Year of the Dragon time consuming and tedious. If we could just keep the crackers busy at finding the protection, that's time taken away from them working on how to remove it. Again, we were trying to reduce the pool of people available who could crack the game. Not every cracker would have enough time available to make the crack. It probably isn't anyone's day job. Now, I can't go any further without acknowledging another creator who has made a very in-depth video about this very topic, and well, he had the balls to sit through this version of the game and try and complete it. And well, the amount of issues he had was absolutely insane, and I would certainly implore you to go check out the video and his channel, because it certainly goes into a lot more detail than what I'm going to be talking about today. YouTuber Tech Rules, link in the description, actually went through the entire game to its end, and well, he came across a lot more issues than what I've mentioned here, and some of them were pretty much game-breaking, anything that most people would simply quit on. Some further problems that he identified when playing through the game was that apparently buttons would temporarily stop working, and had to ensure that the player was constantly on the lookout for the language in the game to not change randomly, meaning that the player would have to manually change it back at random intervals. Seriously, check out his channel, it's great stuff, and again, I highly implore you to go over there and watch the video. If you manage to make your way to the very end of the game, you will face off against the last boss, and during the fight, you will eventually get teleported to the very start of the game losing all of your progress and all of the collectibles you had, effectively erasing the progress for the entire game. Wow, that, that sucks. 
battling your way through this broken version of the game only to have all of your progress erased. And that was the final sucker punch from Insomniac. They were never going to let the pirates beat their game and if you were playing a pirated version they were going to make sure that you couldn't complete this game. And this final slap in the face, of course, was their intention all along. Were all our efforts worth it? Yes. While the effects of crack protection against piracy are extremely difficult to measure, we certainly caused a great deal of confusion. Until the crack came out, Year of the Dragon was the most talked about game on the copying forums. People wasted discs, blamed the cracking teams, and claimed that the cracks that didn't work were okay just because they hadn't seen anything go wrong. People were saying nasty things about Insomniac and Sony because they couldn't back up the game. Some people even thought that it was funny when the fairy character, who normally offers players helpful advice, instead told them that they were playing a modified game. There is also an effect on future piracy to consider. At the very least, we made a few people think twice about buying a cheap copy of a game. The game was eventually cracked, meaning that if you were really, really dead set on pirating the game, you could play a version of the game that was the same as a legitimate copy. However, that didn't happen until some weeks down the line, meaning that a lot of people likely played the broken version of the game and just decided to go out and buy a legitimate copy because they couldn't play the game. The simple fact in all of this is that game developers will pretty much never be able to stamp out the practice entirely. However, they can do things like this to try and hamper the progress of the hackers and make the pirating of their games as difficult as possible. And as a matter of fact, I do hope that more developers do something like this because it's pretty funny to see when they manage to do these small things in games which eventually snowball into something which is just a big kick in the nuts. As a matter of fact, the Crackers even thanked the developers for implementing such an advanced anti-piracy measure, as it did give them a run for their money and certainly gave them a challenge on this title. So yeah, fair play to Insomniac. Big brain play. Well done. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. I guess... Don't steal games online? That's, that's the only way I can finish this video, I guess. A nice moral for everybody out there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.